But the church today is in complete denial and rebellion against the truth of God. And the church today is nothing but an empty shell of what it had once been. People are sick and tired of these dead churches that do not preach the word of God. They're tired of them. They're tired of dead preachers. They're tired of dead religion. They're tired of the whole stinking dead mess. And they're looking for some life. And there is life in Christ. Amen. Amen. When the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move, people get saved. When the power of the Holy Spirit begins to move, people get healed. When the power of the Holy Spirit begins to move, people are delivered. When the power of the Holy Spirit begins to move, families are brought back together again. Children come back to their parents. Homes that were broken up are healed. Families are put back together. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. All God has ever needed is a preacher that would stand up and open the Bible and preach the word of God. He calls his men to preach God's word. That's all he's ever called for. And once he has that, the power of God begins to move in the midst of a bunch of people. Now I want to talk about three things this morning that they don't talk about today. Number one is sin. You live in a self-centered, selfish world with people that that all they think about is themselves and here's how they've been here's how they've been raised they come into a generation where everything's been handed to them they feel entitled they feel special and so therefore when they're introduced to religion they take the same attitude into their churches that they've been raised in they feel entitled they feel special they feel like there's something wonderful about them that God sees in them and so therefore they adjust their theology to fit that. In plain words, you live in the midst of people who go through a cafeteria line of spirituality and they borrow from Buddha, they borrow from Christ, they borrow from Mohammed, they borrow from here and literally create their own big salad of religion. That's what's happening. And the churches are full of people like that. They're everything and nothing. The church today, that you go hear them sit on their little stool. He dresses like he's been out here somewhere on Fifth Avenue. He gets up there and looks at you like you're, like you, you know, like you're crazy if you come in with a suit of clothes on. And he gets up there and talks to you in a nice monotone voice. And there's no preaching and no power. And he does that because he doesn't believe anything. The churches today do not believe that the Bible is really relevant. Relevant. And they'll tell you that the Bible is so complicated that what you do from Scripture is just pull out little tidbits that speak to you and that you enjoy and let that be the guiding principle in your life. But as far as believing that that book right there is the absolute authority over who you are and what you believe, they don't believe that. Well, let me tell you something, folks. If your faith, if that's what you want to call it, is no more than a smorgasbord of attitudes and feelings of things that you pull out of the Bible then your faith is, looks like a piece of, 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 of uh, Swiss cheese shot full of holes no basis, it won't hold water and then when it comes time for you to need some faith you got none and so therefore these people are not to, they're not brought together by what they believe. They're brought together by how they feel. Everything today in the church house is appealing to the flesh. All the music, all the dramas, all the little skits, everything is so superficial, so thin-skinned. If there ever was a bunch of people that go to a church house, it's today when people have no root, no foundation, no soul and anything that moves them emotionally then they enjoy that because that's all their religion is something like that so this is why you never hear a preacher in these churches preach about sin but the bible says in the book of romans chapter number five it says this about sin it says wherefore by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. Now I can't preach a whole message this morning. I got other things to say about sin. But I'm going to tell you folks, 
The word itself to be so little, S-I-N, is such a big issue because we all got a problem with sin. Sin will kill you. Sin will break your home up. Sin will destroy your health. Sin will take your money away. Sin will rob you of your joy. Sin will put a wall between you and God. Sin will take away from you far more than you ever thought it would. Sin is a killer. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You can't sugarcoat it. You can't make it look good. You can't make excuses for it. You can't explain it away. What do you do with it, preacher? You get it under the blood. <laughs> the only thing that you can do with sin is repent of it and plead the blood of Christ to cleanse you and cleanse your conscience and cleanse your walk and give you faith and give you power to overcome whatever besetting sin is destroying your life. The second thing that you never hear in the churches today is the doctrine of the new birth. They never talk about being born again. It's all about how I feel. It's all about my latest experience and all oh, how they like to share experiences. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Paul says, for this I know, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone, he said, day and night with tears. Paul said there's going to be wolves that are going to come and they're all already, there's packs of them now. It's not just a few, there's many now in our generation. And they're going to come to devour the sacrifice of Christ and the promise of new life through him. They're going to promise you liberty as the scripture says in the New Testament, but they themselves are the slaves to corruption. They're promising something they, they're not experiencing themselves and they can't deliver it. Listen to what Jude says, the last book of the New Testament before the book of the Revelation. Verse 3 says, Behold, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Here's what the wolves do. They teach that you can live a lifestyle against the word of God and still claim heaven as your eternal home. That is the wolf that's now at the door of the Christian church in America. Listen to what the apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Be, do not be deceived, neither fornicators. That means people who engage in sexual intercourse outside of the bonds of marriage between one man and one woman. Fornicators are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Settle it, it's in the word of God. Don't be deceived into thinking you can live in a moral lifestyle and heaven will still be your home. So hard for this generation to hear. When you've got preachers standing in pulpits saying, well, God understands your need and God is a God of love and God won't send anybody to hell. No, that's not true. God is a God of love. We know that. But the Bible tells us that fornicators have no inheritance in the kingdom of God, nor idolaters, people who have other loves in there. Something that is in your life that, that is 
is, is your whole obsession. The church is, or Christ is just a little part of your life, but there's something else in your life that you're pursuing. Nor adulterers, people who engage, who are married, but engage in, you know, today we take words like adultery and we call it an extramarital affair, as if it's a black tie event. Bible calls it adultery. Adultery. Settle it. Deal with it. The sex out of sight of marriage will keep you outside of the kingdom of God. And sex outside of the bonds of the person that you are married to, the, wife, the man or woman you're married to, will also keep you outside of the kingdom of God, unless it's repented of nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. In other words, that's both, men and women. Folks, listen. I understand the dilemma, in a sense, uh, that some might face in same-sex attraction. But I'm telling you, you can't give in to that lifestyle on any level, because the Bible clearly says it will leave you outside the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said, some people are eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. So in other words, some people just live their lives without any sexual activity for the kingdom of heaven's sake. And he said, whoever can hear this, let them hear it. You know, you can, you go to a funeral, for example, and you can dress it up with flowers all around and you can, there's a death certificate and the preacher can get up and say nice words. But the reality is that the corpse is still dead. You can't make it live. It doesn't matter what you do. But it's the same with homosexual marriage, folks. I gotta say it straight out today. I'm not gonna hold back on it. You can adorn it with flowers. You can get a certificate from City Hall. You, you can find some backslidden preacher to say nice words about it. But the wages of sin is still death. You can't change that. Now listen, I'll be called a hater for, for this message today. I understand that. But I'm not a hater. If I hated you, I'd let you go to hell. If I hated you, I'd let you die in your sin. If I walk down the street and your house is on fire and you're up in your bedroom window and I don't warn you, am I really a good neighbor? Do I really love you? Do I really care about your eternal destiny? You can curse me out of your bedroom window all you want, but I will still warn you that your house is on fire for your soul's sake. Nor thieves, lest we should think that we're just gonna focus on one thing, nor thieves. That means people who steal. It's that simple. People who steal, people who steal a little, they have a contract maybe and steal a little bit more than they should nor covetous, nor drunkards, people who come to church this morning, but you were out at a club last night. You're drinking and dancing, and, and this foolishness, I'm out there to share the testimony of Christ. Who are you kidding? If you really are there to do that, stand on the sidewalk with pamphlets in your hand and give it to the drunks coming out of the club. You don't need to be in there with them nor revilers. You know, especially in, in this environment we're now living in, in this country at this time, where reviling has is is, is become the speech of the day, where it's, it's fashionable just to curse everybody around you. You know, Paul said revilers don't inherit the kingdom of God. We have a different heart. We have a different spirit. We're, we're a different kind of people. Jesus himself said, blessed are the peacemakers. Yours is the kingdom of heaven nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. I love that. Would be to God that I can honestly say that of everybody here today. Such were some of you. But you are sanctified. That means you are set apart for the kingdom of God. You are, you, 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 you honestly repented. You walked away. You moved away from what God's word says is wrong. You can't make it right. 
You can't change it. It doesn't matter if a million people say, oh, isn't this wonderful? If God's word says it's not, it's not. You are sanctified. You walked away. You walked away from these old ways of thinking, these old behaviors and all of these things. And you set yourself apart for the kingdom of God. You're justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of God. Now you and I are living in an hour where the wolf is heading to the door of the church, demanding in our generation that we bow down to this new definitions of good and evil. This is where we're living. The days of being able to say without penalty, what I'm saying today are, are over. If they're, not, if they're not over, they're very close to over. It's an amazing time that we're now living in. Jesus said in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. This is the point. There's a lot of hirelings in a lot of pulpits in America today. And they're, they're, they don't necessarily leave the people, but they leave biblical truth. They flee the truth when the wolf is at the door. When the wolf says, if you don't bow down, this is our golden statue. This is what this generation is going to look like. This is what you'll preach. These are the truths that you will espouse. They will bow down when the music plays to save themselves because it's always been about themselves, not about the people. The hireling will flee. And you will, you are seeing and you will see a huge departure from biblical truth in the Christian church in this last hour we're living in. The Bible declares that there's going to be an apostasy, a great falling away in the last days from biblical truth. And the hirelings will lead the people, not into the narrow way of eternal life, but into that broad way of destruction. And they flee because it's always done about them. It's been about the robes. It's been about the praises of man. It's been about the titles. It's been about the numbers. It's been about the apparent evidences of success. Then when Christ comes and challenges them, they hate him. His own system hated him. His own people hated him. They pushed him away because he declared their definitions of salvation and truth to be bankrupt. He told them they were full of dead men's bones. He said, you go cross land and sea to get one convert and you make him twice the child of hell that you've become. These are the words of Christ. He warned us in the last days there would be a great falling away. He warned us, he said, you're gonna be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You can't escape that. That's a promise in the word of God. We're going to be hated. It's starting now. You're seeing it in society. You're seeing it in the workplace. You can't even have an opinion on things anymore in this generation that we're now living in. These godless prosperity preachers that spend all their time, all their time, godless as they can be, hear me and hear me well. There's only so much time left in this life and you hear me well. All they talk about is money, 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 money. And they don't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the cross and salvation and redemption and the new birth. They know nothing about it. Where are they going, preacher? They're going to hell. They're going to hell and they'll drag you down with them. I don't care if they're Pentecostal, Baptist, Lutheran, Episcopal, I don't care what they are. If all that preacher that you listen to talks about is money, what did Christ die for? They had money before he ever died. Long before he died. Thank you.